There are lots of religions in the world. Google search tells me there are about 4,300 of them. I cover Christianity a lot here because it is the most dominant religion here in America. It also feels like they're the loudest of them all, at least on the internet. I'll always stand by the idea that claims that attempt to describe the reality of the universe requires scientific evidence. Therefore, all religions are the same to me. We dismiss them until proven otherwise. I mean, that's just how positive claims work. And personally, although I think that preserving cultures is a good thing, I still wouldn't mind seeing religions go away. That's because a lot of them conflict with what has been discovered by science, and it tends to turn people away from science, which is a bad thing. I mean, sure, we can always live without science and go back to the primitive days, but humanity has always been about making progress, bettering the lives of people, and fulfilling the curiosity that comes with every human being. Following a religion, in my eyes, feels like you're grasping onto something of the past, an idea held by ancient people, while refusing to move forward with what science can provide. That's why I spend a lot of time here on this channel debunking religious claims, especially ones that conflict with well-proven science. I want people to embrace progress, I want people to change their ideas for the better, and I want people to follow the path of science. That's how we can change the world. The key principles of Judaism, creation, revelation, and redemption, provide us with three pathways in which to encounter God. So let's take first creation. Why is it that religious people spend so much time promoting their religion and spreading anti-scientific ideas? I mean, I get it, a lot of religions actively teach you to recruit more people, and that's what makes it so dangerous. I spread the word of science because I am passionate about it, because it truly is our ticket to advancing humanity. These people spread their religion because their religion says so. Immediately you can see a difference in our motivations, and that's why I get so annoyed when I see videos like this, because for every step forward we take, there's always someone trying to pull us a step back. For every person influenced by these videos, that's one less person who embraces or even potentially contributes to science. We work so hard for our knowledge, and it feels like these people can undermine it completely for other people just by playing the religion card. It's frustrating. One of the greatest scientists of our time, Lord Martin Rees, former astronomer royal, president of the Royal Society, master of Trinity College, Cambridge, one of the greatest scientists in the world, in his book Just Six Numbers, points out that the entire existence of the universe depends on six mathematical constants, which have to be so precise that the probability of any combustible source of energy coalescing around those six constant constants is almost infinitesimally small. Great, just leave us with that and don't tell us which constants you are referring to. So in that case, I will also respond by giving a general answer. Constants seem like they're fine-tuned, but they're actually not really. Because here's the thing, constants are constants because they never change. If, for some reason, they were slightly different, what makes you think that life would not be possible? What makes you think that the laws associated with these constants wouldn't be able to change either? The fact is that we can't answer those questions, which is why it's pointless to think about. There is no way to know what would happen if the constants inherited a different value and the equations changed along with them. The point is, we don't know. And because we don't know, life very well could have formed under a larger range of constant values. See, when you make a claim such as constants are incredibly fine-tuned, you have to prove it, and the fact that no one would know is exactly why your argument is flawed. Equally, the emergence of life itself from inanimate matter is both inherently mysterious and goes against one of the fundamental principles of entropy, which is that the world is gradually, any system gradually loses energy and order. Now, biology works in the exactly opposite way from very simple uh, organisms to ever-increasing uh, organisms of self-organizing complexity. I'm so tired of the entropy argument. Maybe this guy has never heard of a counter-argument to it, or maybe he's just being ignorant on purpose. What creationists should do is that whenever they want to use an argument that is somewhat popular among creationists, such as the second law of thermodynamics, they should Google it first. Is there a consistent scientific answer to it? Then read it, understand it, and stop spewing the same argument. Now, I've made probably around two videos in the past that responds to this claim to a great amount of detail, so I'm not going to repeat myself entirely. Those videos are a lot more scientific, and I'll admit they're not really for creationist eyes since they won't really understand all of it. But basically, this is what reality is. The second law of thermodynamics only states that entropy increases over time, or in other words, energy becomes less usable and more uniform in a closed system. So first of all, the Earth is not a closed system, but I hesitate to say that because it fundamentally misidentifies the counter-argument. In order to tackle this 
this argument properly, we have to tell the creationists that they have fundamentally misunderstood what the law is. It states that entropy increases over time, or in other words, the amount of usable energy decreases over time. That does not change anything about life forms, because living organisms are only mediums of energy, not energy itself. So for example, an organism obtains energy, and over time it loses that usable energy. As long as the energy output from the organism, such as when another organism eats the first one, is not higher or the same as the amount it obtained, then it is not violating the second law of thermodynamics. And that is indeed the case. We lose energy as we climb the food chain. And this is the same case if we look at non-living objects too. If you charge a battery, then use that battery to charge a second battery, the second battery will end up with less usable energy than the first. But of course, if you charge the second battery from a new source, then the system is no longer closed. The second law of thermodynamics holds true in all cases, and living organisms is no exception. Just because the organism itself can get bigger or more complex does not change this fact. The medium of energy itself changing does not violate anything. Think of the organisms as batteries in my analogy. So if you look at creation, the simplest explanation, and I don't know of any other, for its fine tuning for the emergence of life, is an intelligent creator. And you don't need to invoke doubtful concepts like intelligent design. There's just no other way of explaining how it happened to be like that. There is a way of explaining, and that's that you don't fully understand scientific concepts. Pretty simple, if I must say. Secondly, in terms of revelation, the Torah. Look at Judaism. Jews are a tiny people, 14 million perhaps, in the world today. And yet so powerful were the ideas of Torah that they inspired two other great religions, each of which took a part of Judaism, not the whole of it, but see themselves as worshipping the God of Abraham. And that comprises 2.4 billion Christians and 1.6 billion Muslims. Just because your religion is popular does not make it true. How was it that a man, Abraham, who lived almost 4,000 years ago, who commanded no armies, ruled no empire, performed no miracles, uttered no world-changing prophecies, his lessons are so pure and true and eternally valid that they have persuaded more than half the world's population. There is not a single human being who has ever lived, who had a greater influence. That's the thing about religion, right? This one in particular teaches that you must spread it to others. And yes, there isn't a bigger religion out there than Christianity, but throughout history it will have a snowball effect. As soon as one religion gets even mildly more popular than the others, and if it teaches you to convert others into it, then it will snowball and snowball. Just because it happened to be your religion is mostly by luck. I find it kind of silly to be proud of your religion for being so big, because if you become religious, the chances are it's going to be the biggest one because it's the biggest. As for redemption, the great open societies of the West were built in the 17th century by people deeply immersed in the Hebrew Bible. That's such a silly argument. No one knows if society would be better or worse if it were built by people who followed other religions or atheists. In fact, if societies in general were built with the backbone of scientific ideologies, I honestly think it would be much, much better. But who cares? You're just trying to flex at this point, and I find it to be incredibly silly. If you want to enter a flexing competition, then there's no way you could beat science. At the end of the day, a lot of what you take granted today was built upon scientific ideologies, the very same methods that you started this video off trying to debunk.